Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarter with Weingarter Racing. Today's video is about what's about to be tested on the 496 Dino Mule. And if everything goes well, that'll be tested on Wednesday. These are some of the pieces that I think are probably more interesting than what you guys want to actually see get tested. But we'll talk about that. For those that are unfamiliar, maybe you got a whole bunch of new subscribers since the last Dino session that we did that. Um, just to recap, this was a 496 that uh, Dominic... He has his own channel, DZ Performance. He supplied the short block and we did, and several sets of the heads. We tested six different heads, a whole bunch of different manifolds on each heads. Those results were in this book that you can go to my website and purchase. So if you go to my website, wengines.com, there is a link on the homepage for my online store where you can buy this book. So if you don't want to look through the old videos, because there's a whole bunch of the videos that go together, um, I didn't put it all in one gigantic video, it was a bunch of smaller ones just to kind of break it up. But all that data from the entire testing is in this book and you could purchase it. And I'll show you some of that today just to kind of recap. The only two heads that are going to be tested this time are the Pro Max 317s and 290s. They've since been altered from factory and we're going to see what that does. So to recap, when I got them, I had a set of 317s and a set of 290s from Pro Max. The only change I did, I didn't do any port work whatsoever, completely from the factory except for one thing. I put minus 50,000 locks on this just to increase the spring pressure because it was hydraulic roller can that was tested. The 496 that this went on was a pretty basic setup most of you might use. Scat rotating assembly, molly pistons, 10 and a half to one compression ratio, hydraulic roller, 243, 247 duration at 50 thousandths, 630 lift on a one and 110 LSA. Pretty, pretty basic. And the thing cranked out some pretty good power and I'll show you some of that before. And this was, probably the more interesting one to me because if you looked at the chamber size, these are dramatically different. So the compression ratio, even I say 10 and a half to one, well, with the two, 290s, because it has a 110 cc chamber, the compression rate was actually much higher, almost a point higher compared than when it was with the 317s. So, but all the flow numbers and everything you would find is in that. So we're gonna go through some of that and talk about the changes. So let me flip to the right page with hopefully without dumping stuff, here we go. This is the flow on the 290 stock, um, completely stock. So if you, we're just going to hit some highlights. Peak, it went 345 and 341 on the short runner because a big block has a short long runner and a short runner. They don't flow the same. Exhaust went uh, 282, so not bad. The 317s, they actually flowed quite a bit more. They were 358 on the long runner and 350 on the short runner. And exhaust was actually worse at 271. So, yeah, not so great. But let's look at some of the other stuff. Let me pull this one up. This is probably the better thing to show you. Yeah, you can purchase these stickers on my website too. I tested that. This is the difference in the power um, before. Completely stock heads besides, I said, the locks. And both of them got locks changed. So if you look at the red lines of 317s and the black lines of 290s. And if you look, the 317s make so much less horsepower or torque and horsepower at the lower rpms are about the same through the middle and then the 317s actually peaked out just a little bit more and you can tell we're starting to go into valve float i think we got that fixed so we won't have that issue for next time so we'll see if maybe the 317s don't carry a bit further um but yeah that's that's how they did before so what i changed now because this this gave me more questions usually dyno sessions do that you get more questions than you probably do answers so one of the things was is the 317s worse because the port's bigger or is it because it may have had less compression ratio than what the 290s did? So yeah, I know it'll be like velocity, velocity, velocity. Yeah, but no, you cannot argue that having a bigger chamber and one point less compression probably affected these torque down low um, and still for it to do better up top, is, it's a little bit different deal. So that was an interesting thing. The other thing was, well, what, what happens if the 290s actually float as well as the 317s? What would happen? And that led to this. So here's what's been done. On the 317s, I flat milled them down to 110 cc's. That's about 54 thousandths that got removed. So that gives you a 110 cc chamber now for these. So these two heads now should have the same compression ratio when we test again. So we're gonna find out if the 317s will pump this back up or if we'll make even more and then keep going on. And then the other thing that was really questioned we do with the 290s was, well, would it make as much peak power and still have more torque down low if I made these flow closer? So on this head, it's just surface just to clean up the deck. So it's still 110 cc chambers, 
But what I did do is cut out to a 2300 intake valve, which is the same size as the 317s, and also did very little port work, more because I wanted to experiment with something. I didn't really want to increase the size too much. I want to keep them very close so we could see what would happen. In other words, I wasn't going to blow these things out to make them flow exactly what that did, because then I'd kind of feel like it'd be almost a little pointless. So uh, that's the reason for that. So let's look what it did for flow numbers real quick. So I gotta make sure I'm on the right one. This is the 317s. So this is the stock that I just showed you and we're just gonna hit the highlights. Change, oh, and then the on this, which I talked about in the video, a uh, different earlier video, you can go back and watch it. I changed the intake valve job now to a 50 degree on intake on the 317s, which really helps out the high lift flow, which it did. And there's a reason for it more because it, if you put a 45 degree on the top cuts flatter, so you end up taking out more of your chamber. So, to keep the chamber size at 110, I put a 50 on it. So if we look at it, it now flows 386, but at the lower lifts, it actually lost. So it lost like eight CFM at the uh, 400 lift and lost about the eight CFM also at the short runner too. But it really does gain at the top. So this is gonna be kind of an interesting one too, if gaining flow at the top, even though we only have a 630 lift cam, will make more power than losing low lift flow. But you're like, well, it's gonna be hard to tell with the less chamber, you're absolutely correct. But it is what it is. It did gain some exhaust flow just from doing a different valve job in some areas. So like the peak did come up about eight, but then again, it also lost at the lower lifts, which is weird that flat mill would cause it to lose because that's a 45 degree valve job on the exhaust. It shouldn't have lost at the lower lifts, but it did. So that was kind of interesting, a little interesting. But anyway, let's look at the uh, 290s results. So this is the, this is going to be a little confusing, so bear with me. This is a long runner, short runner. This is me trying to keep the 225 intake valve because when it started off stock, it had 225 intake valve. I put a different valve job in, I wasn't really happy. So it, it they'd removed so much material from factory that you really couldn't get the angles in. That's why I cut out to a 2300 intake valve also because it keeps them the same. So what did it do for flow? Well, this one really did pick up just about everywhere. Um, so you look at four again from 275 to 278. So it's about three CFM, uh, quite a bit more, almost eight on the short runner though. And then at five, 317 to 322, that's a gain there pretty good. I only gained three CFM on the short runner. But then look at this at 700, 334 to 348. Now we're really getting 14 CFM getting there. And the short runner was 327 to 330, so still gaining. But look at peak now, it goes 369 versus all it did before was peak at 345. So it's like quite a bit better in the short runner, 373 CFM now compared to the best it ever did before was 358. So it, it which is weird because that's that's a oh, that's the wrong one anyway. Looking at the wrong thing, this is the stock one. So the best it did before was 341, now it's 374, and even at that same spot, it's still seven CFM better. The exhaust, this was trying to nail head exhaust. That's a two lip, so these two are the same exhaust valve. It's it's a gain, pretty good gain. So this one was, it pretty much gains everywhere. Doing this work and the valve job. Now I kept this one a 45 degree seat though. I didn't change it to 50. Um, so both of them 45. So doing that work, it pretty much gained just about everywhere on the entire curve. Unlike what I did with the 317s where it gained more of the peak and lost down low. Which you can't say it's entirely the 50 degree valve job. Cutting out that chamber certainly didn't help. You might say, well, you did some work here. Really that's just to blend in the valve job. That's it. So that's, there's what's done on the heads, and that's gonna be tested. And here are the manifolds that also get tested. This is the brand new, I mean, this sucker's new. This is the AFR 4910. It's their dual plane, and it's made to fit these 290 heads. Now, um, AFR and Elderbrock and Promax all have this small oval, which is really a roval. There's no intake that really fit it that was a roval design. There are usually ovals, like your 781s or your Race Right 270s from Brodix. They didn't, there wasn't no manifold that had this technically. You'd have to port match it yourself to make it work. AFR kind of fixed this. They designed their whole brand new, this is their only big block Chevy dual plane intake manifold. And they just got done doing it. It's got a different rib design down low in the plenum that others do. But the biggest thing with this, and this huge change is, yeah, now we have a roval. These are not port matched or testing exactly the way it is. So it's closer than what any other of the intakes have been, 
So this should be very interesting. And I know that they spent some time in development on this manifold. So, and they did not pay me. They didn't, they didn't send this for free or nothing. The only reason why even this is here is because the customer asked about it. I looked it up and I bought it. So I paid retail price for this. So the, I when it, however it does, it does. So I never change anything anyway if a, the company happens to give me a product to use for testing. But I want to be upfront. There's absolutely no incentive for me to show either way. But there isn't, was, I would never do that anyway. I, ne I always up front and I tell you that, that I've got stuff. But yeah, this one paid retail. This one I also paid retail for. And this one is going on the 317s. Now, here's the catch, though. I got the wrong one by accident. So hopefully by the time we get to the dyno, I'll have the correct one. But what this is, is this is the Brodix new single plane manifold. They've had it out for about a year, though. And this is, part number is BM2006. Do not get that one. That's why it's the wrong one. It should be BM2000. 2006 for a 10-2 deck. So that's the problem why I can't use this. Um, but the other one looks exactly the same. But this will get tested on the 317s. And we'll get to see if this, what this does, and which would be very interesting because I love the design. I have never tested it. It's a much taller one than your 454Rs. Um, this would be pretty good. So both of them 4150 flange. My even test with the Dominator carb. So a spacer, what I'll do is that adapter space. It's been really successful on the small blocks. Maybe we'll see how it does on the big block side. Now, here's the bad side for you guys that are watching this right now. You probably won't see any of these results if you're just a regular subscriber to my channel. So if you're a regular subscriber, thank you so much for being that. But all of this that will be filmed um, and tested on Wednesday, you guys probably won't see for months because I still have another session I've already finished up with the small block that I haven't done videos for yet. And I still haven't finished on Dino Session 5 for the small block yet either. So once those videos are done, then I start doing the videos from Session 6, then this. But if you would like to see it earlier, you'll actually get to see what's happened, the actual results, because you're dying to know the day of Go to my website, wengines.com, and sign up. Well, you don't sign up. Pay to be a channel member. Because what happens is when I'm dynoing, I am texting the entire group of my members the results. After, as soon as it's done, as it's pulled, there. I'm like, this did this, this did this, this did this. Plus, you get videos sent. So you get to see stuff that never makes the, the, the YouTube channel just because of time and stuff. It's it would make some of the videos very boring, but they sure do add a lot on. And other stuff is like, I, I'm more secretive than I would sell with my members, but not necessarily subscribers. So don't take the wrong subscribers, but definitely if you're really wanting to know, like I, I really want to know today, sign up to be a channel member. It costs some money, but it's worth it. And remember, if you're between the ages of 16 and 18, email me. Because you get channel membership for 20 bucks while adults pay way more. Because I really do want your younger generation to learn more about what's happening. Because I think that'll far help you in the future. So I'm more than willing to help you out that way. And I've got a couple um, younger member channel members as it is. So if you're 16, 18 year old or you know someone that way, uh, tell them to email me. Because not only that, one of my other channel members said they'd sponsor some people. And I think he's already sponsored one. So... Um, I think he's going to sponsor three others if there was any that would happen to be interested between 16 and 18 years old. So the rest of it, yeah, it's more, but man, it's worth it, I promise. But uh, eventually this will be another book like this and you'll get all the results, but this will be fun. So guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm No Superman. You guys take care.